coming up in this week's episode. Welcome to episode two of our Lessons from a Lap Year mini series, where we are sharing all the details of the mistakes that we've made, the things we've learned from others' mistakes, and what we would do differently after traveling for two and a half years full time around Australia. Plus, loads of great information, tips and tricks, resources, and so much more. This week, we are talking about the must have gear what you need and what you don't need for a basic setup and how to keep yourself and your family safe on the road. Be sure to subscribe and join us for all of the adventure. back to this week's episode of course we're doing our mini series on lessons from our lap year mm-hmm. all the info that you'll need to know before you go or if you're already on the road this will certainly add value last week we covered off purchasing preparation and planning everything that you need to get yourself a road trip ready whether you are hitting the road indefinitely setting off on your own Mm. big lap or getting out there when you can during holidays all right tonight's ep is around gear the must-have gear not necessarily our favorite gear Mm -hmm. but certainly the items that we now can't live without that absolutely either make a difference, make life easier, Mm -hmm. or get us out of a situation if we get ourselves into one. Yes, and I think it's really important to note at the top of the episode, you don't need it all, and we've said it time and time again, don't go out and purchase all of this stuff before you set off. Get your basics. We're going to talk about those tonight. Mm -hmm. And then travel and discover what are those items that you really need? And what are those items that you really want? And I mean, what is amazing? You can jump online, get something delivered from just about anywhere around the country. Anywhere around the world. It's amazing. It is incredible. And I mean, Mm. we've picked stuff up around Australia from some of the most remote places going into Bunnings and BCFs and camping stores. So you can access it on the road. You don't need it all before you get started. Okay, we're also going to be covering off some safety and security, which is super important. And it seems to be a major question from, you know, green nomads, those newbies to this lifestyle Mm -hmm. that are worried about their own personal safety or the safety of their gear, their vehicles. Oh, which we can totally relate to because that is exactly how we felt before we hit the road. We were worried about so many things. Okay, we we wanted to start again with another quote for tonight's Mm. episode, and it is that you're more likely to regret the things that you didn't do than the things that you do. Oh, so powerful, and isn't that true? It is, and hindsight is a wonderful thing, Mm -hmm. but maybe you could uh, bank on our hindsight and uh, we can encourage you just to... Do it. Take the leap. Do it. Do it. Okay, here we go. Some of this, if you're already out there and you're traveling, you're just probably not in a grant. So I'm Mm -hmm. just going to go fairly quickly through some of it because it may seem pretty obvious, but we've included it because they are basic things that you do require. Yeah, of course. And if there's something that you think we've left off this list, then drop a comment below and Mm -hmm. let us know because we are putting all of this information together in a fully comprehensive ebook that will be available on our website. Great. So if there's pearls that we have left (laughs) off, no matter what part of these episodes that we are talking about, please do let us know. Okay, basic setup gear for a rig like what we have, Mm -hmm. or even a camper trailer, 
You've got your chocks. Very important. Yep. Never happened to us, but you could probably Google and find someone's van rolling down a hill. Terrible. Uh, your ramps, we'll talk about those in a minute. Mm -hmm. We use them every other day when we set up. Yeah. The jockey wheel. Uh, now, we have upgraded about a year into our travel to a trail mate. Mm. Trailer mate. Yes. Love it. There's, it is. There's it's, even a, a better one. Well, yes. And this is a hydraulic jockey that mm -hmm. takes a little bit of the work out of it and it's instead of being on a wheel it's on a flat base you can still put it on a wheel it does come with a wheel attachment mm. but we find the flat base is perfect because having a, a van like ours that has that raised height mm. you generally need to be putting some other blocks of wood under there to, to, jock, to jack it up yeah there is i think one called black jack uh, that some friends that we camped with at Chaffee Dam. How you doing, Dan and Amanda? They actually get out there and he's just like, and this thing just, <laughs> you know, I mean, amazing. And then um, Cruise Master has mm -hmm. some incredible stuff as well, which is all, you know, self-leveling. And yep. you get pretty fancy and it can, of course, get pretty expensive. Yes. Uh, but you definitely need to check that out. And depending on your budget and then also your own level of fitness, that would help determine what you purchase or what you use. Yeah, look, that's a really good point because we met some well-experienced, mature campers at our very first caravan park, Rivershore. Yes. And they first introduced us to this hydraulic system, which was great for them because as they're in their golden years, it does take a bit of pressure mm, off yeah. of, of having to lift something heavy and take that weight. So Absolutely. something to suit everyone. Okay, ground dogs, awning anchor kit. You've heard us talk about this product. World's number one awning anchor kit. Mm -hmm. World's best selling awning anchor kit. We will actually put the review of that mm. product at the end of this episode. You can check it out for yourself. Good or idea. if you're impatient, jump over to our gear page at thefeelgoodfamily.com forward slash gear and you'll be able to find pretty well all the products that we love mm -hmm. there as well. Yeah, it's a really good point. And this mm. also happens to be our number one favorite product. We get asked that question yeah. a lot. It just takes, again, takes the stress out of it. There is nothing worse yeah. than feeling like you're going to lose your awning. So the anchor kit really does take stress out of your setup. And multiple users for the products in that kit as well. Yes. Pretty cool. All right, flat out hoses. We had flat out hose as our main water hose for about a year and a half, mm. I think. We've just received recently the black uh, sullage hose. Yes and we haven't yet to review that. But we absolutely love this product. Australian made, Australian owned company, and it is a little bit more expensive, but we've said it before, pay once, but don't buy the same thing two and three times, it ends up more expensive. Get something that's great quality straight up. Great quality, again, takes the stress out of it. And also the setup and pack down of it being on the reel, you can just <laughs> wind yeah. it in, it it packs away nice and neat. Yeah, you don't have stacks. to struggle. And uh, I'll do a review on these. You awesome. know, it'll make it much better, but it is a conversation starter. Yes. Every time. Wow. Yeah. Did you get that, mate? All and right. Jasper loves it because he feels like he's <laughs> yes. a fireman. Uh, Grey water tank. Okay, this is a portable tank. Uh, Fiamma, I yes. think is the brand, and we actually purchased this in WA to help us, uh, uh, I guess, gain access to a pretty amazing beachside camp that otherwise, without it, we wouldn't have been able to access because mm. we don't have a grey water tank installed. Um, you know, there's probably 50 to 60 percent of vans out there that don't, mm. and if you're like us, then this is a great solution. It really is. And look, yes, we did purchase it to specifically go to one campground, but we have now been to quite a number mm. of campgrounds that require you to catch your grey water. So it yep. has definitely come in handy for the outlay versus the experience that we've been able to have. No brainer. Yeah, I was a little bit mm, put out by the price at first, mm. but yeah, fantastic. And the thing with grey water tanks, at some point they are going to smell mm. and they're going to, you know, upset the, uh, 
environment, so to speak. So having a portable one, a little easier to manage. Yeah, it's yeah, been great. It has been great. Mm, so a good option if you don't have one installed in your van. Okay, Max Trax. Oh. Another product we absolutely <laughs> love. Look, they're amazing when you need them, yeah. you know, and we've only used ours once. We met a family again over in WA around Dampier that got, had gone off. Now he's got four Max tracks. They're on the front of his caravan mm. and he's gone off in his four wheel drive. Stuck for five hours before someone came and got him. I tell you what, yeah. So if you're gonna carry them, carry them actually on your on four wheel drive. Yeah. That would be our suggestion. <laughs> yes. And that's only after somebody else's mistake. But yeah. Max tracks, fantastic. In fact, they also have a tire deflator. I, I can't remember what the name of it is. Indeflate, I think. I hope I got that right, guys. But uh, anyway, it is a, a fantastic product. We're yet to try that out. Hopefully, I might get one for my birthday. Oh, okay. Hot yeah, tip. There you go. Remind me. <laughs> but I've watched a video on YouTube on this product and it looks fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So what we use, we have a couple of tyre pressure monitors. One mm. is digital. Uh, the problem with digital, obviously, if the batteries go flat, you're stuffed. Yep. So I've also got a backup plan which is really great as well. And that is just reading a needle straight off the pressure mm -hmm. of the tire. And of course, an air compressor for your, for your tire kit in your four wheel drive. An absolute must if you are going to adventure, whether that's even on sand or just different types of landscape, mm. because you will constantly be dropping and raising your tires, so. Yeah, oh, well, look, especially in the Northern Territory, yeah. in parts of WA, We've used it so many oh, just times. Just here around Fraser. Yeah. Yeah, Rainbow Beach. Yeah. Awesome. Priceless. And having the air compressor, the value in not having to line up between 20 other guys <laughs> on a weekend yes. at, the, at the petrol station, much better. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Leveling tips. These are some great tips that really have been shared with us. These mm. weren't really things that we learnt through our own experience, it was through other people saying, hey, if you do it this way, it will be much better and yep. safer. Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, have a really good quality spirit level. Mm. Even if you've got something like savvy level or something like that, have something that you can actually physically hold and see in place where you want. Yeah. I feel like we've got that pretty well down pat now after two and a half years of traveling. We're pretty good yeah. at leveling the van with our spirit level and still liking each other and getting <laughs> through the process. Yeah, and that's a really great point is assigning roles. I know what my jobs are, mm -hmm. Kate knows what her jobs are, mm -hmm. and we don't cross over unless necessary. I know how to do Kate's jobs and vice versa. Mm. That's and important. I know who to blame if something's <laughs> not done. Exactly. All right, spirit level though, very good tool. Uh, the ramps, now we mm. mentioned those before. We use our ramps every other day the amount of times you'll pull into a caravan park or a free camp or a national park and you are on some kind of tilt, mm. I jokingly say not all campsites were created equal. And they weren't. And no. you will be surprised, particularly with the caravan parks, that's what gets me, is how many sites are unlevel in caravan parks. Yeah. We are also surprised at how many people put up with being unlevel when they <laughs> set up. I can't sleep like that. No. And uh, a really great tool for the ramps is to stick them under the back wheels of your tow vehicle if you are still hitched. Mm. And that way you will be able to get just a really great balance on where your head position is. That is if you are a north-south facing island bed yes. like we are in our van, it, we just like to be just slightly raised. So it just allows me just to run them up onto those ramps, yep. perfect. Or, you know, run the van on one side generally will mm. be uneven. Mm. Yeah, lifesavers. Get a good night's sleep, so important. Yeah, and get a good quality set of ramps. Yes. Okay, staying hitched. We just spoke about that. That's a great tip. Just put them under the back wheels of your vehicle. Mm. If you need the front of the van, just to slightly raise. Yep. Okay. Car into neutral before the handbrake on. I love this tip. Yeah, this was really great. And it was uh, from a guy that runs a caravan repair store, actually. 
uh, in northern New South Wales, right on the Tweed, cooling down a um, border there of Queensland. Yep. And he said, do you know, mate, I'm just watching you. What could actually help you is once you have chocked the van wheels, okay, mm -hmm. very important part of this, chock the van wheels, putting your vehicle into neutral before you unhitch to release the torque and pressure between the four wheel drive and van. Mm. And what will happen is the vehicles will settle. Yes. So now what you've done is you've released the torque out of the tires in the main, you've released the pressure between the vehicles, one pulling, one pushing, the angle, any sort of pressure that is, is being exerted by either vehicle against the other is removed, it's neutralised. Yes, well that's the word we've created for yeah. it. I don't know if it's really a word. <laughs> what is so noticeable about doing this is the amount that the van then does not move when you are in that unhitching process. So it just again makes things a lot safer. Yep, so then put your handbrake on on the van. Mm -hmm. You can put the handbrake on on the vehicle as well so that they absolutely now hold that position. Yep. And then jack it off and you get near to no movement and it means that you're not going to crush your hand or you know that is when accidents seem to happen mm. that we hear about are on yep. hitch and unhitch yep. really great advice neutralize yourself neutralizing okay <laughs> all right here we go other items that we think you should have on hand every day to day uh, just have a handful of spare hose adapters for those times that you leave <laughs> them behind I've actually, when we first started out, I used to find them and I used to think, yeah, one for, the good, one for the good guys. Yeah, that's right. You know, especially if you find a brass one, hey, it's like the golden ticket. But in saying that too, then how many times have we met other people who've been like, oh, I must left have my... left it. We're like, here you go. Have Please. one of ours. Yeah. Um, a good idea, if the, look, now we're down the road a bit, is if you find one that's already on a tap, from the poor soul before you, leave it there. Because there's probably another poor soul coming. It is such a rookie mistake that is repeated regularly. We've got it? a few of those rookie mistakes that mm. we seem to make often. Another really great hose fitting to get though is a twin hose adapter. Mm. So that, uh, I think it was in Colgara. Yes. Limited amount of water points. And so the guy basically said, Look, first in, best dress, mate, good luck. So we rocked up and it was, you know, getting late. We got the last point and there it was, one final tap between like, you know, three people, yeah. who's gonna get it? Having that adapter meant that it could split and, you know, it makes everyone a little bit nicer. Yes. Okay. Share the love, share the water. Exactly. Uh, different length fresh hoses. So mm -hmm. alongside our flat out hose that we use, mm -hmm. I also have a couple of smaller length, normal, they're still food grade poses. Mm. And there's one I think is three meters and the other one is five. And that is really great for those awesome times when you rock up somewhere and all the fittings are on the right side of the van, you know, or in, yeah, in our case, that, that's the actual right side of the van. And boom, it's just there. You don't yeah. need to run, you know, your 25 meter hose out and curl it around and put it everywhere this is just makes it a lot easier to have yep. that and the sullage hose the black hose for your gray water mm -hmm. that also can be cut into different sizes yes. and they give you adapters for that yeah, so i'll review that cool. yeah mm. all right here we go keep going where are we up to katie where are we up to here, gaff oh. tape lecky tape zip ties Holding the world together with gaff tape. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and fence wire. They are basically your go-to for everything. Gaff mm -hmm. tape, electricity tape, zip ties and some fence wire. Yeah. If you want to know how to actually use those in a camping scenario, just Google in YouTube bush mechanic and you'll find so many tapes, so many videos that will get you out of trouble if you need it. That is very cool. Yeah, look, Steve Irwin used to say there is nothing that grey tape can't fix. It's true. Mm -hmm. I remember watching him play a footy game once. Oh, just wrap it's it up in grey tape. Wrap his knee up. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, here we go. Small tool kit. Uh, we have a small tool kit in the back of the Hilux and we mm -hmm. also have one 
in the van as well. Yeah. Uh, and that really might seem like doubling up, but the amount of times you'll be out on the road without the van, mm. you know, you do separate. Yeah. It's a good idea to have two small kits. Also, those really small little screwdriver sets. Yes. If you've got kids, <laughs> you will need one of those. Yep. The amount of time that Thomas, you know, stops tooting and Jasper needs something changed. And, and on that too, if you're going to be in a scenario where you have to buy repeat sets of batteries, mm. again, pay once, get more expensive, rechargeable lithiums and they will last longer and you'll get better value in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. Look, on the tool thing, mm. we've had loads of questions come in over our time about, you know, I see all of these people and they've got massive setups with toolboxes and they've got one yeah. of everything. And there are a lot of people out there traveling who are either mechanics or tradies or, you know, who know what they're doing and have a tool for everything and the just in cases. We certainly don't have that. In fact, we've recently trimmed down what we carry because we were lugging stuff around that we never used. So again, you don't need it all, but Full just- drill kits. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've never, never opened it. Yeah. Mm. So don't go overboard with the tools. Just have the basics, enough to get yourself out of a sticky situation and then go to an expert if yeah. you're not already an expert. A and and having the right comms communication mm. would alleviate needing to carry all that stuff as yeah. well yeah Good point. okay i mean i had tools i didn't even know what they do yeah <laughs> but so they look good get one of those <laughs> true story all right uh rechargeable batteries we just talked mm. talked about that this is just a tip from us this is totally user choice but we never leave our van with batteries on charge mm. okay. and we have a lot of batteries to charge between all the, of our camera equipment the amount of lithium computers. is is phenomenal you know drones cannons mm, GoPros, GoPros. Uh, yep and then just other devices yep. all of the recording equipment for our podcast you know there's so much of this stuff mm. if there's going to be an electrical fire or something quite often it can be around batteries overheating there's a reason why they don't let you travel them in certain formats on planes and how they have to be packed and stored is, is for a reason. So, yeah. so it's an unlikely uh, event, but a risk nevertheless. Yes. Okay, let's look now into fuses. <laughs> okay. We, We've learnt the hard way. We have. Not having any fuses is a mistake. Just get yourself a set of those mini fuses, different um, size ampage and just have a handful of them mm. and, and have a few of each type. They don't weigh anything, <laughs> but it's a pain if you blow something, you know, the toilet flush, oh, you know, it's, I think it's a, a tiny little, you know, 10 or 15 amp fuse. I didn't have any, you know, and it, it, no big deal. Then, you know, you have to use a glass of water and be flushing like that. And, and who knows why it blew and, you know, but there's been things like that with the fridge, mm -hmm. you know, blowing an amp well, your fridge is pretty important yes so and it's so a it's simple the toilet <laughs> yeah it's a simple <laughs> fix good point all right fuses definite um where did i go can you see what happened to my oh something's happened to our file here we go da, 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 you're gonna da, have da, to da, scroll da. scroll 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 please talk amongst yourselves yeah technology this is here a massive document We're again back. a little promo here we are, okay, we're back. Oh, and just a reminder, this big document that we were madly scrolling through is going to form up the basis for our ebook. It will have all of the notes over these three episodes, mm, all correct. of the links, the resources, as much good stuff as we can jam in there for you so that you've got it at your fingertips. Perfect. Safety and security. Ooh, a dun, big dun, one. Dun, dun. We were so worried. We were. Yeah, worried about both our personal safety, you know, will we get attacked free camping? Mm. In fact, it, it prevented us from free camping. Oh, for a long time. Yeah, and yeah. now we just can't get enough, you yes. know. We, we are probably at about half and half mm. now, but moving up towards a little bit more of it because we're just loving it. Oh, we love it. And we were worried, is somebody going to steal our caravan? Yeah. And yes, it definitely happens. Yes. 
will it happen? It's probably unlikely. So there were so many things that we were concerned about. Yeah. Okay. But let's talk about some of the things that can help around this. Mm. First on the safety though, this is a major one for us because again, traveling full time and you're watching people who only have that small window of traveling during mm. holidays can be quite rushed, I guess, mm. because they really have limited amount of time. So you'll see people absolutely zooming past you, towing massive vans, probably overweight, mm. just trying to get there because, you know, I've only got 10 days and I'm not going to go back. Um, so we get why, uh, but then when it comes to unhitching and hitching, we would recommend, particularly with younger ones, unless they're old enough to actually help and really, really understand, leave them in the car. Mm. And oh. I mean, not unattended, I mean, leave them in their car seat. Yep. Jasper is not allowed out of his car seat until we have finished unhitching. Oh, and he loves it. That's yeah. his iPad time or he gets one of our phones to yeah. play a game that he doesn't always have access to. So he loves that. Are you guys unhitching? He says to us whenever we pull up somewhere. Yes, and if like, we say, no, mate, we're staying hitched tonight, he's like, mm. <laughs> righto. But honestly, in on a serious note, you know where they are. They're safe. The car's still running. They've got the air con on. They're happy. You yeah. can get out, do what you need to do without that distraction. Mm. And we have seen some pretty hairy incidents yeah. with kids running around and vans being backed in and it just it's just not worth it because something can happen in a split second people are rushing yeah. you know and you see it all the time so yeah. strap yeah. them in all right here we go wheel locks security systems alarms spare car keys yeah. okay there are a number of different systems wheel locks that you can get um, we have a really large motorcycle lock mm. that we use because we couldn't get one to fill, fit the wheelbase between our, our dual axle. So you can think outside the square, that's what we have. Yeah. Um, we used to lock it, it up whenever we would go to the pub. Like, I mean, we yeah. got a little bit crazy there at first. Yeah. Obviously, you know, common sense prevails. If we're ever going out for a day and we're leaving the van, then yeah, I do chuck it on. Yeah. Um, having the pin system on this particular van, it's very similar to a DO35, it's an Elko version. It doesn't have a lock. They have not made a lock for that particular um, hitch, mm. um, but it's probably one of the rarest kind of hitches that you'll get. So it yep. wouldn't be able to be stolen anyway. Yeah, that's right. So. And actually on a recent episode, we were traveling between Lake Argyle, between Kununurra over to Broome, yes. and we brought up this topic of security being in a place that is mm -hmm. renowned for um, I guess bad behavior, yes. theft, yeah. aggression. Absolutely. Yeah. And we put it out there. We put the call out there and we had some amazing comments and suggestions come in from you guys. The standout that came back though, was the witty security system, which we are yet to test out, but mm -hmm. more and more people we talk to these days and we see comments online say we're getting this installed in our van and it's a way of being able to monitor and also track uh, immobilize. It. Mobilize, track it. Mm. It's quite an amazing system. Yeah. The other thing that was said to us was to take your spare car key, mm. if it has an alarm button on it, and put that beside your nook or your bed where you sleep so I just have that in there and in effect it kind of acts like a panic button if you needed to make a lot of noise yes and get attention very quickly it's an excellent idea and it's the spare key so it's it's a great idea yeah so thank you to whoever that was that let us know about that one all right let's move on a little bit quicker now first aid kits this is an absolute must mm. but have a couple, have one in your vehicle and one in your van. Yeah, and, and make sure they're a decent size. You can yeah. get them in all different sizes. We also have a smaller, more compact one that we pop in our hiking bag when we head off on our you know, hikes, no matter where we are, we take that with us. But make sure you've got something decent that covers off as much first aid as you can. Yeah. And the other thing that you need is a snake bite kit, whether this comes in your first aid kit or whether you need to buy it separately, be sure to have those compression bandages on hand. We live in Australia. Yeah. We have animals that want to kill us. Lots of them be in prepared. the water, <laughs> on land. Yeah. The thing with it, getting an actual separate snake bite kit, they generally come with a really great information mm. booklet on 
all the different types of snakes. Yeah. It helps you to ID them, which is really fantastic if you need to navigate that information mm. correctly with a first aid or a first responder. Yep, awesome. Okay, while we're on first aid, we should also talk about doing a first aid course if you can do it before you hit the road. Yeah, great idea. That is an excellent idea. And look, for you and your family, but also for others as well. And we have certainly been in situations where we've pulled up and been able to provide assistance mm, yeah. to others in need. Yeah, we had a, an old couple that he'd fallen on a slippery boat ramp and then she went to help him and they both fell and he mm. had broken his hip and dislocated his shoulder and she was just a mess and yep. she couldn't move because they were larger people and older and yeah yep. so you, you're probably going to come across something if you're on the road for that amount of time yeah be prepared okay let's move on we have got towing course and a four-wheel drive course yeah at the towing course is an absolute must in my eyes especially for the partner to give you that little bit of confidence so that you know you can step into that that role of towing if you need to and know how to maneuver the vehicle absolutely priceless mm. if you're a novice do a four-wheel drive course as well mm. we've only had a minimal amount of training uh, through tony up in rockhampton but he went through sand driving and it made us realize that we could yeah do we it. could do this yeah it's just such a confidence booster and the information you'll retain mm. because you're in situ and you're doing it. Yes. So that's fantastic. Any education, further education that you can give yourself to make your life better mm. or and safer. Reduce the stress. Do it. Reduce the stress. Yeah, minimal cost for an amazing outcome. Yeah. All right, weigh vehicles. We did a weigh-in up there in Darwin in Northern Territory. Mm -hmm. One of our most viewed videos, look, people know that they need to get weighed and I think we knew that earlier on and we just didn't do it because we thought yeah, we're going to be overweight <laughs> here. I just do want to face the music. It can void your insurance. Mm. We found that out, uh, not through an accident, but through talking to the experts. Yeah. They estimate that 70% of vans are overweight. Yeah, look, our recommendation wow. would be to do it straight away do it before you leave if you can have an mm. understanding of where you're at and what you need to do to be within those legal limits good all right mm. uh, I think on our website as well we also have an understanding your weights document don't we yes we do thanks to the territory way guys up there in the Northern Territory so if you want to know what all those acronyms mean you can download that for free on our website yes okay a grab bag Wow until we were in an emergency situation, mm. a fire up on the uh, Yapoon coast there. Incredibly scary, 2 a.m., massive fire on the beach in front of the park we were staying at. Mm -hmm. Whew, yeah, grab bag, made us realize we needed one. Yes, and talking to other experienced campers who said, this is a must. You really need to have that sorted before you take off anywhere. And basically it is a small bag with your essentials in there that if things get really hairy, you know you are literally grabbing that and going. Yeah. So we have done a, a, an episode and a segment on what is in our grab bag will include all of that information in our ebook as well. Right. You don't want it to be massive and bulky, you just want it to be the essentials to get you out of trouble. Grab. And go. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, evacuation plan, same thing. Okay. Katie and I, through our traveling, we, we've done a lot of traveling because of our careers during uh, our previous lives. <laughs> and we always understood the importance of the evacuation plan. No matter what you're staying in, whether you're yep. in a hotel, on a cruise ship. On the spirit of Tasmania. Mm -hmm. It's one of the first things yep. that we do no matter where we are. Figure out where your emergency exits are. How many steps is it going to take you to get there? Paul will literally drop the bags in our cabin on the spirit and then walk the hallway out to the muster station taking note of how many steps it would take us to get there and whilst mm. that may seem like a bit of an over-the-top thing to do Perfect. if we found ourselves in an emergency situation I have a hundred percent confidence yeah. that by Paul doing that he's going to be able to get Jasper and I anywhere safely so the same applies 
when you're traveling and in your vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know, just be aware of those things and have a plan between you so that you're on the same it's page. That's exactly what I was going to say, Katie, yeah. is that then make sure that you're on the same page, yeah. relay that information, talk each other through it. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, powder extinguisher. In your van, you should have one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great idea. We've got a second extinguisher in our truck, same as, you know, dual first aid kits. We have a fire blanket mm -hmm. in, in the truck and in the van. Mm -hmm. Just have double up so that you're not then going, oh, I've got to run back over there to get that, put something out that's over there, mm -hmm. you know. Be yep. prepared. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Where is the local hospital, emergency services, especially when remote? And again, we can talk from experience. This Too is, many times. Yeah. You know, traveling, adventuring, you're out in the wilderness, stuff happens. If you've got kids, stuff happens. You know, I mean, I've broke my ankle twice. Mm -hmm. In remote mm -hmm. places. Yeah. Jasper's cut his head open a number of times in remote places. Just it's take crazy. note when you are particularly remote or in the outback, where is the nearest hospital, medical centre? Mm -hmm. You know, how do we call the Royal Flying Doctors if we need? Just know that information. God forbid you're ever going to yeah. need to use it, but being be prepared. How many times have we said that? <laughs> and I think if you don't have a charity, you're looking for one, support the Royal Flying Doctor Service, spend yeah. some money with those guys, get your first aid kits through them, you know, if you're looking for ways to support them. It is a free service for all Australians. Mm -hmm. And go and Amazing. visit one of their incredible yeah. uh, centres and it, they're so interactive and you'll learn amazing information about this service and what these incredible people do. You can help the Royal Flying Doctors by donating money. Amazing. Now could someone get me down to <laughs> Here we go. A personal locator beacon. Mm. Okay, we have a Garmin InReach Mini. It was $550, I think it was on special, maybe saved 80 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. That was from BCF or Anaconda, one or the other. Uh, sat phone, again, another way to do it. A personal satellite communication device. We love the Garmin. Zolio is, I think, partly owned an Australian company, mm. same thing, different version. Mm. Uh, these systems allow you to not only SOS, which is their primary um, Role, use, yeah. yeah. But you can also send multiple texts, like up to 10 texts a month, uh, which allows you to say, hey, we've arrived here, or we're going here, or everything's good, mm -hmm. or please send a tow vehicle. Or, yes. So you can predetermine different texts. You can switch this service on and off, off on a monthly subscription. Mm -hmm. I think ours is about $25 per month. Yep. Pretty cheap for peace of mind when you are out in the middle of nowhere. And if you are stuck, you know, and you need that mm -hmm. attention very quickly and instantly, amazing, life-saving. Yes, totally okay. worth having. Tell someone where you're going. Tell someone where you're going. Now, yeah. this could be the neighbour at your campsite. This could be, you know, phoning home, ET phone home. Hey, we are going out to Cameron Corner today. We are going to be offline for eight hours because yeah. there is no cell service out here. Tell somebody where you're going. If you don't get home, then somebody's going to go, oh, hang on a second. Where are they? Those guys were meant to be coming back today. It, again, it's just a really simple safety precaution. Keep your family safe. Keep yourself safe. Okay. Next one is, again, a lesson that we've learnt. Carry spare or emergency cash. Oh, yes. And look, it, it can just be, you know, maybe $100 in the secret compartment, you know, the sunglass compartment in your car. You're giving it away. A hundred dollars in, in the van, you know, just have a little bit of cash. You don't have to have a yeah. lot, yeah. but certainly have something. Well, especially in today's time when we are a cashless society, mm. everybody relies on beeping that little bit of plastic. So you, I never have cash in my purse, but having that spare cash set aside again in an emergency situation yeah we were in tassie the last time that we had this problem and uh they had telstra completely down across this whole derwent river mm -hmm. and we walked into the pub 
can't get anything. We had no food on us. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's not very good, is it? No. Emergency, couldn't get a glass of wine, couldn't get a meal. <laughs> yeah, or, or fuel, it's probably, <laughs> you know. That's what I meant. Yes. <laughs> okay, car mirrors. We carry a paper towel roll and some window cleaner in the back of mm -hmm. the truck so that we can keep our mirrors clean. Even if the Hilux, you know, is desperately needing clean, the mirrors are always clean and the windows always clean. Again, you just... You need it, need to be visible. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And for five minutes, you know, if you're stopping to fill up with fuel, take the time to whip around, clean your windscreen, clean your mirrors. Again, it's just another yeah. safety precaution. Pretty simple. Okay. Smoke alarms. Now, your van should obviously come under legislation with mm -hmm. a smoke alarm fitted smoke detector we would also recommend that you put a co detector in carbon mm -hmm. monoxide detector you know sadly you see these stories in the usa this is a mandatory it mm -hmm. has to be installed prior to purchase in australia that law doesn't apply currently mm. we think it should mm. Yeah, something yeah. hopefully should change there, save some lives. Yeah. You're not going to know if you've got a gas leak inside your van. No, it's all over. Yeah. And okay. for what, $25 I think it was? With a 10-year lithium battery in it. You don't even have to change it for 10 years. Yeah, do it. Amazing. At Bunnings, cheap as chips. Awesome. Okay, I think the brand there was Quell, Q-U-E-L. -L. Quell, -L. yes, and they do the smoke alarms as well. So, okay, good. Two-way radios. Fantastic. You know, w when we first started traveling, we didn't have one in the ute. So good. Now you can communicate with truckies. Is that mm -hmm. seem a little bit foreign and weird at first? Yes. After the first day and 600 kilometers. Yeah, break a breaker. <laughs> Copy, you know, get your own handle. It's Look, great. they're lots of fun too. We also have two little portable ones as well. And they're, they're multi-use. Off the top of my head, a couple of really quick things. They are great for reversing up the van if you don't have cell service, phone service to be able to call the driver Excellent. and guide them in. So your two-way is great for that. They're great yep. fun for the kids too. Now there are chatter channels that the kids can play on. Paul and Jasper will often go off on a walk while I'm prepping dinner and they'll take a radio and leave one with me and we can have a bit of a chat and some fun of an afternoon. Can I just say on that, if you teach your kids how to use a radio at, at a young age, mm. if heaven forbid you're in a situation where they could reach a radio and you're in an accident mm. and, and they know how to use it. It could save your life. Amazing. Yep. It's a gift. Yeah. Yeah. And they're fun. Yes. Very good. <laughs> All right. Copy Jasper. Do you read me? Uh, copy mum. Could you just wait a second please? Copy. Jasper, do you read me? Um, we're just going out walking for firewood and we found a perfect banter stick. Okay, bye. Bye. Love you too, mate. See you soon. Over. You're so beautiful. I love you and you look pretty. Thank you, baby. I love you too. Oh, you're beautiful. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Maps, apps, offline when you're out of service. Mm. Again, and just another easy, simple thing, another way to get yourself prepared. But download those maps off some of those apps that we always talk about. Uh, mm. Wiki camps, you can, you know, pay the premium fee of seven dollars and download so that you can use it offline there's also Psygig as well and a number of other applications that you can get those maps onto your phone because you don't want to be stuck somewhere in the middle of nowhere with no phone service yeah. and not be able to have access if that's how you rely on your maps fantastic mm. okay trust your gut i mean that this is a huge one, and it, mm. and it is true. You know when you get a feeling. Mm. We always say, say hello to your neighbour when you pull up to a free camp or yeah. a caravan or anywhere. You're going to know pretty well straight away if the person's a psycho. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> or if you're going to be sitting around the campfire with them later having a beer. That's what I meant. Yeah, and, and that'll pretty well give you a pretty instant feeling. Mm. 
okay? And I think it also, when you do say hello to someone, you've got a buddy system already yeah. that's unspoken. If you yell out later, John, you know, whatever, they're probably going to say, oh, what's going on with Paul? Yeah. You might need a hand. Yeah, absolutely. Right. The same thing goes for pulling up to rest stops, free camps, if you're the only campers there. If your tummy tells you, mm -mm, we don't want to be here, then it's probably right. We always tell people, just trust your gut. Exactly. Mm. Okay. Don't underestimate how big Australia is. It is huge. It is basically the same size landmass as North America, the USA. Yeah. The difference is here in Australia, we have three people per square kilometre. In the States, they have 33 people yeah. per square kilometre. Yeah, it is amazingly Amazing. large. And when you start travelling, you really realise how big it is, especially once you get over to the West Coast. Mm. And some places are few and far between. So again, just be prepared. Be prepared for any situation. Okay. I actually think there's probably a lot more that we could keep talking I'm about. Sure but there that, is. You know us, we could keep talking. That is an amazing start, uh, particularly around your safety and your security yeah. and getting you on the road. And there is nothing that can, you know, beat prior preparation mm -hmm. and the comfort of knowing that you've maybe got yourself covered. Yeah. if there were to be an issue. Yeah, and a really important thing to remember is don't let the fear of the unknown mm. stop you from getting on the road or from going and trying free camping or for putting yourself out of your comfort zone. We mm. came from corporate lives. We'd never camped. We'd never spent a night in a tent. We had no idea what we were doing. And now we don't have any fear around that because we... We put ourselves out there, we put ourselves out of our comfort zone and we love it and it is awesome to have that freedom to be able to do those things. Don't let the yeah. fear of the what ifs and the, you know, maybe that could happen and put those aside, be prepared, do your planning, love have it. your checklist, get out there. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so there it is. That's episode two. Next week, the big one. The lessons, the yep. complete lessons and the things that we would change. Yes. The things we know now. Yeah, absolutely. And isn't hindsight an amazing thing to be able yep. to look back on those two and a half years and, and think, okay, there are definitely things that we wish we'd known and mm -hmm. we would do differently and we will share them with you in next week's episode. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us again this week. For now, we'll say look after yourself, look after your family. And happy trails. Get out there. Get out there. <laughs> okay, <you do. laughs> Time to talk about some more of our favorite products. You would have heard us talk about the Ground Dogs Awning Anchor Kit. We love this. It is one of our favorite products. We use it every day on the road around Australia. In fact, we love it so much, we reached out to Paul from Outback Tracks and said, let us be your brand ambassadors. Now, what makes this kit a standout are these. These are the Ground Dogs screw-in pegs and they are no ordinary pegs. They are pegs with bite. They're 250 mil stainless steel left hand thread and that thread is aggressive. It is designed to go into the ground no matter how hard the surface is and there's some clever little tips and tricks that we're going to share with you today so that you can put these to use whether it is for your caravan, your playground equipment, your gazebos, pop-up tents and of course your awnings. They're safe and secure. They will give you the peace of mind and are going to make your overall experience that much better. Now let's talk about the key features. As I mentioned, they are stainless steel, 250 mil pegs with that amazing aggressive bite. They come with a 19 mil head, so cleverly designed to fit your drill, which is fantastic. And the awning anchor kit comes with a 19 mil drill bit. So everything you you need to be able to get them in the ground and of course you don't have to use your drill 
they will also fit your caravan stabilizer winding arm which is a great way to get the kids involved in set up and pack down now they come with two different types of attachments the wing collar and the hook collar and what is so fantastic about these they are high vis orange so they'll stand out and they act as a locking device so if you can't get the entire screw into the ground you simply wind down that wing lock until it locks into place and you're nice and secure a great tip from us if you can't get the screw into really hard ground make sure to have a 12 mil masonry bit on hand to pre-drill that hole and then you're able to get the screw in the ground again using that wing collar to lock it into place if you can't get it the whole way down the hook collar is another clever design easily attaching to the safety spring aka the toe savers so you can connect up those high vis straps we also use these for other applications like securing our clothesline so it doesn't blow over in the breeze look all of these items can be purchased individually we think the best value is purchasing the rollout awning anchor kit it is an essential must-have item for any camping setup and a great gift for the camper who has it all. Thanks for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share our channel. And if you'd like more information on full-time RV travel and living, visit our website, thefeelgoodfamily.com. There you'll find loads of free resources, our weekly podcast, caravan cooking recipes, our monthly Go RV magazine articles, and much more. We look forward to seeing you next week. Take care of yourself and your family, and happy trails.